Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 23. We are live once again. 23 on the 23rd. Oh, I thought about that yesterday and I forgot to mention it. Yes, 23 on the 23rd. I think this is the first time that's happened. So that's exciting. Yes. I'm glad for you all to be here with us to experience this momentous occasion. <laughs> <laughs> We have a great show. Welcome. And, yeah, we have a great show today, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, but first, we just want to say, hey, um, welcome to everybody. Barbara, Sean, AK, Cody, thanks for joining. Good to have you. Yes. Thanks, Cody, for moderating. Mm. Indeed. And let us know where you're from. Um, I'm Ari, and I'm in San Francisco. Ben is in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. We'd love to hear where everyone's from. Indeed. And we can introduce ourselves. Um, I'm the library manager for Adobe Fonts. My team works with all the Foundry partners that design the fonts that are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. And we currently have over 150 partners and consistently add fonts to expand the library. And I'm Ben. I'm a content producer for Adobe Fonts. I started out in support answering all kinds of type related and Adobe Fonts related questions. And then now I produce the Adobe Fonts show and videos so that you can get the most out of type in Creative Cloud. So that's me. If some of you are new, and I hope that someone here is new to Adobe Fonts, um, Adobe Fonts is a very large library of type that you can use in your projects, both personal and commercial projects. Um, and if you have no idea where to start, I would go to fonts.adobe.com and check out the recommendations section. Right from there, you can activate fonts and get started. So if you've never used Adobe fonts before, I would check that out. Yeah, and I'll be showing it in a second. I'm here on the Adobe fonts show. We talk about all things fonts and have great workshops with professionals in the type world. And if you like the show, subscribe to Creative Cloud on YouTube and follow us on Behance Adobe fonts on Behance to be updated on all future episodes. Yes. Yes, yes, We yes. have people from Pennsylvania, Nashville. Oh, so Cody and Barbara are both in Nashville. And Barbara says, call me. <laughs> um, Jasmine's in Maryland. Mm. Ernie's in San Jose. Sean is in Germany. Mwendwa is in Nairobi, Kenya. That's awesome. Norsh is here. Welcome back. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Yes. And uh, we have an audience poll just to get a sense of where everyone is at with today's topic. Um, the question is, do you hope to make your own font one day? And the answers I've provided, but feel free to let us know in the chat if you have your own. One, absolutely. Two, perhaps seems daunting. Three, I'll leave that to the professionals. And four, I've made a font already. So, and I tried to add my own my own little emotional spin to each one. I hope that came through. <laughs> um, um, but uh, yeah, let us know what you think of, of type design and if that's ever something you've dabbled in or thought about. Um, it's certainly something we'll talk about today on the stream. And if you have questions about that, keep them handy. Because um, yeah, that's today's topic. So let us know where you're at. We have a few ones. Mm -hmm. That's good. Aspirational. Cody wants to make a font out of her handwriting. Mm. That's, I feel like that's pretty common yep. as kind of a starting point of wanting to digitize something and your handwriting is something so personal. Lots of ones. Good. Then this is the stream for you. Yes. I would say. And then there's yeah. also some threes. But I think that's it's also the stream for you mm. if you're a three because we're going to watch a professional how they create faces and really appreciate more about the process. Yeah, I mean, I, I even though I don't do a lot of creative, th I do some creative things, but I love seeing process behind the scenes of stuff I don't do. And often I find I can take insights from a totally different discipline and bring them over to whatever I'm doing uh often so so i think uh this is definitely the stream for any one of the people in this list so yeah yes 
And uh, really quick, let's do a quick demo of um, of Adobe Fonts and people can, can get started if they haven't checked it out yet. Great. So I'm sharing my screen um, and I'm here on the All Fonts page. So you can see right here, there's a menu with different categories. So if you go to All Fonts, you can browse everything by categories by tags by classifications and i have it set to newest right here so that's a great way to discover fonts that have been newly added to the library and we have a lot that we've added really recently some interesting styles cool things to check out and then another way to discover new things is to go to the recommendations tab so if you go to recommendations i have it already here to show you you can see things that are in different categories. Some of them are recommended specifically for you based on your history of what fonts you've used. So if you click on that for you tab, that'll show you images of the fonts that might be appealing based on your history. Then there's trending, newest, hidden gems and staff choice. So you could look through all of those and see some suggestions, maybe if you're stuck, if it's just too overwhelming, um, sometimes it's cool to use this way of browsing through. And then if you click on any of these, you can go straight to their family page or just activate them immediately, just right there. And then it's already available in your app of choice that's, to use. That's how fast it and is. It's easy. really easy. Yeah. And one other way to discover new things on Adobe Fonts is to go to the Foundries tab here. And we have some featured foundries that we show at the top. We happen to have Nova type foundry by Joanna, who's our guest today, um, featured. And you can look through all of the foundries that are featured, get a little background on them, see a couple fonts that they've created with images, just to explore a little bit easier. And then we also have a directory of all of our foundries. So since we have over 150 independent foundries represented, it's a good way to just get a sense of what countries they're from, who they are, and explore that way as well. Yeah, some of their style. And it's it reminds me too of if you like uh, you know a single from a band, you might like the whole album, right? And so you might want to get the whole album and see what else you like. It's similar browsing the foundry page. If there's a a font you like, check out that designer's page or the foundry page and see see what else might might uh, grab hold of you or might might be something you want to check check out. Yeah. So that's just a little teaser on how to explore and discover new fonts on our website. And speaking of Nova type, I think we can introduce our guest. So welcome Joanna. Here she is. <laughs> Hey Welcome. guys, nice to see you all. Good to have you back for the second second time. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here and to know that there's a lot of people around the world in different countries watching this. And mm -hmm. I hope that uh, you finally get an idea to start your own font. Yeah, oh, that would be fantastic. Yes, if anyone has ideas for the fonts they want to start now or near the end, please let us know in the chat. Um, Joanna, really quick for those who didn't see your previous episode, and if you want to check that out, you can find it on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Um, we did an episode about warm design and warm uh, using friendly fonts and expressive type, and that was a fantastic episode. So check that out if you haven't already. But how did you get into type, and, and what is it about type that that kind of drew you in and made you excited to, to pursue this and, and all that? Well, I started a few years back. Now it's almost uh, 11 years wow. now. And I started mostly because I was studying graphic design and got into letters a lot. Uh, I learned with another type designer here in Portugal that was my teacher. I was lucky to, to design with him from DS Type. And I started, I really fell in love because I love letters. So I loved handwriting and sketching and uh, books so I love to read and I like I like you know the feel of the page and see the text so that was easy and interesting when I saw that I could make my own font uh, was really interesting I started out the same way as this 
per, uh, the someone was saying about uh, like uh, scanning your handwrite. And I did the same thing. I think I used some app online that could like digitize your own handwriting. I don't remember the name, but it was very interesting. And then you could type with it. Um, so definitely the handwriting is a way to start an interesting way to, to start designing. But yes, I've been doing fonts since then um, for many different clients. And I work you know, for Novatype Foundry, also collaborate now with another foundry where I help to bring up uh, the 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 type uh, into into life with the Schrift Labor, which is an Austrian and Porto based uh, foundry, and we we develop fonts for other people. So it's cool. always in the font uh, work. Yeah, and it sounds like you got a bunch going on all in the font world. So yes, awesome, fantastic. Well, <laughs> let's great. let's uh, not delay any further and dive in. Um, are you ready to uh, to go? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Fantastic. ready to go. I have my DNA open. Oh, yes. <laughs> so You're showing us your DNA already? <laughs> yeah, <Wow. laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and I'd like to just um, say that Joanna's in Porto, Portugal. So mm. if we have anyone also in Portugal, let us know. Indeed. Love to hear that. Sure. All right. So what are you showing us? So I am showing you a D and an N and an A. This is the, using the Glyphs app uh, software. So it's the Glyphs 3, which already has a few updates, like showing up the X height and baseline. This, So it's really showing off a bit better now, for especially for first time users. So when I want to start a letter, so I'll start designing. So I'll show the basic steps, you know, for sketching up uh, a first letter. One thing that happens when you start uh, sketching out with a, like, for for example, with a rectangle, the letter in the bo in the background disappears, and the panic <laughs> comes that you have to create your own. Um, <laughs> so we, you use you have to use the pen tool, so we can or we can use the as you've seen the so for squares or circles. Uh, for rectangles, we can use that, but uh, we will use the the pen tool to start like doing the the other part of the N. And as you can see, it's very similar to what uh, Illustrator does mm -hmm. with the vectors. Um, so it's kind of similar process, but for type, we usually have a few more rules to keep it more organized to have the better curve. So right now I'm going to do it very clumsy. So you can see we have all the points we need, but it's all very clumsy. But this is how how type works. Uh, it's not about doing the, the perfect points, but it's also it's about um, Let's do this just differently. It's about editing. So once you've put some points and you have some shapes, then you start editing and adding uh, uh, some points. We'll use the, the square. We'll copy paste, which is very simple, just copy pasting. Uh, we'll copy paste because we want to have the same thickness mm. now for our stem, so we don't do it wrong. So we pull it down, and now we'll join these points together. I, I just want to say in response to the chat we've sure. had a few questions even before this started mm -hmm. of does adobe have a font creation app and mm -hmm. adobe does not um so this is glitz it's not an adobe app but we're having joanna show the process so that we can get an insight into how type designers create fonts and mm -hmm. what they use and just get an appreciation for that um, so not an adobe app if you are wanting to do something similar and just learn how to draw letters, um, you can use Illustrator. Mm. So same kind of concept of vector, tool, Bezier curves, all that. Yeah. There's the font self extension as well that you could use. Um, but as far as a fully fledged font editor, there isn't an Adobe app for that. So yeah. just putting it out there because there's a lot of questions. Yeah, coming. The the basic thing is to imagine that if you if you do it on Illustrator, you can always copy paste or import uh, and then finish finish it off. The, so the, so the you could you could start an Illustrator and then bring it into Glyphs sure. yeah, at some of point. Of course, cool. And if you're careful there in Illustrator to keep the points horizontal, vertical, as I'm doing here, like the Bezier curves to make them like this these handles horizontal and vertical, they will become quite uh, clean and nice for for a font here. Mm. 
Uh, so that will work nice if you import. Uh, but the difference here for the, uh, being a font ed editor, and that's why professionals and, and for creating a font we need it, is that we need to be able to type. So it's like we need to be able to create, uh, you know, all the letters. They need to have a special name. So then when you type on your computer, you can see it. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to immediately show you this font. If I want to use it already, I can export to, uh, to our, in this case, I'm going to open on InDesign. And I can see the font in use immediately. Uh, here it is. So here's our N. So if you prepare this this way with glyphs, for example, if I do a change to the end very quickly, like this, I export, go there, and I can see the changes on InDesign. I Whoa. do this a lot. I do this a lot so I can see the process. So and you can see it in a real document on InDesign. You can have your own sketches. So this is really a cool uh, way and of working. Would Would you show really code. quick again the export where the folder is? This is. Uh, when you export yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, the it, folder is important that it yeah. is in the library, application support, Adobe, and fonts. And if you cool. don't have an, a fonts folder, you can create it uh, from scratch and just call it fonts. And when you do the export, it goes there and InDesign can recognize. It will show up in InDesign right away. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it will show right away. So yeah, so this is, we can do our DNA. So if we go to do a, a font that we want to have the same kind of shapes, we keep the same stem, of course. So for the D, we will keep the same, the same shape, but we want to have an ascender, so it goes up. There are, and then there are two, two things I just wanted to point out that I think are super cool that you've talked about yeah. already. One is we're using what you've already done, which is fantastic, and I think something uh just a good reminder for anyone who's who's you know working in in any field being able to reuse the stuff don't don't redo the work all the time and also for mm -hmm. consistency but then the other thing you said at the beginning was was getting something on the page and then editing and i think that i love that idea and i i feel mm -hmm. the same way about songs or about writing is that if you start from a blank page it can be very you know you can be get get very paralyzed but if you just get something out you can then edit it um it's, so. Yeah, it's important to see it uh, in use as fast as you can because that's where type's going to live. It's yeah. not in in our editor, but it's going to be used in text. It's going to be used in. It depends on the size as well. You can test different sizes there on your on your app. Um, like yeah, we're doing this very clunky D, but as you can see, I I took some part of the end mm. so I could kind of use that curve. And then, of course, we have to adjust and make it nice. But as you can imagine, a type designer can spend hours with one <laughs> click. And, and that's the thing, especially at the beginning when you want to set up the design and you're not sure and you need to add it more and more. It really depends on, on the shapes. And then, of course, uh, you get to a more to a nicer shape, but it takes time and it depends on the complexity of the font. So yeah, we had a question from Philip about um, adjusting kerning and um, how two glyphs interact with each other. So how would you test all of that in this app or in your process? Yeah, sure. I mean, for, for right now here, you can see that there's spacing and we have spacing between the letters. And spacing is one thing. So then we want to have a special place around the letter, as I usually call it, it's like the box of the letter. And then if you have like a V and an O, you might see that the V has too much space. If it keeps the same box, that's when we do the kerning. And here we can control it with, um, well, right now it's not going to do, going to visualize very well, but we can kind of do a, a quick V just to see, because it you would just create some um negative spacing so that's what happens with kerning and i can just i'll just make a very very quick v so we can copy paste this shape we can mirror it so most of the commands here on glyphs are very very easy to use so you'll uh, you'll see how easy it is Oops. yeah like this so if you have 
like a no, so we'll make a very quick O. Well, it's not, it's never a circle, but we'll take it <laughs> for, for testing. So we can even do it like that, but we can add another inside just quick again this needs a lot of compensation this should never be a no so just let's <laughs> <laughs> try this for, at home for right? it's just for test for, for demonstration just, purposes only for demonstration of turning now you can see the v usually has like the lowest of the lowest like spacing even when you're spacing you keep it at the lowest so then the kerning is not super big but then what you do is just do the you know the visual uh optical adjustments but you can even do it uh, directly on indesign indesign can do it himself uh with the uh, optical kerning if you use there you can even import that to glyphs but that's a more technical issue but you can definitely yeah. you can do the kerning appear uh here and this will so, this will create you know uh, a default kerning pairs for the font when you when someone yeah. activates it and uses it and of then you course. could adjust it further in InDesign after that as well, yeah. Yes, uh, usually the type the the type designer will try to do the best kerning for smaller size. And if you, of course, make the font very big, you might have to adjust yourself on InDesign because there's no kerning for big sizes. There's only for smaller text size that we do. So if sometimes you see a font and you blow it up and make it very big and you think, oh, there's no kerning, the spacing is all wrong. It's just because that's the way it is. You need to adjust it uh, according to your needs. Um, but for small size, usually it's quite good and you can see it uh, working. So this, this is very bumpy. And as you can see, type uh, takes a lot of time so you can decide on thicknesses, on the shape and um, yeah, and usually the DNA of the font, it's on the D, on the N, but especially on the A. Oh, wow. As you will see later, it's kind of like the letter that kind of breeds um, the personality of the shape. Mm. That it will set up for the whole alphabet, you know, the like, because it has this nice belly that we design and, and it needs to have the outside curve and then the inside curve so it's kind of a, an intrigued letter that gives and it's also the most used letter in the alphabet that's why it will be very important for your font to have a really nice uh, structured a i did not know that it was the most used that's an important yeah, fact everyone in the latin <laughs> alphabet for most uh, western european languages it will be the a some languages might use more the i or the e but we definitely use more um, especially in English, it will be more. The and a. when you're testing out fonts, I'm sure people type the A, one of the first things they type because it's not only the most common, it's the first letter in the alphabet. It's very distinctive as a design and it gives you a yeah. feel for how the rest of it's going to be. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Kind of shows off. So it's where you can be more inventive and also mm. play shape. Yeah, it's like the A, I usually say it's the A and the G, which is very fun to do, but also one of the more complex ones to design. Yeah. But they will set the tone for the playfulness or not playfulness of the, of the font or more serious, but usually the curves will definitely propose more of a challenge here. If, uh, jo jo we Joanna, can see if, if, if you were doing uh, like hand sketching to just come up with ideas, would you often do the A and the and the G as well? Um, yes, yeah. I guess so. Uh, yeah, while I, if I sketch, I usually do the these same letters by hand, definitely. Oh. So it's it's usually the A, the G, and the and the N, because the N is probably the second letter that we use the most, and and the O, of course. Uh, but the N is very also very used. So it's also a piece of letter that we can use to do if we want to do an H, for example. We already know, you know, it's going to be the same, just with a, a sender. So if I just copy paste, and I should copy paste. So type is also modular, so I can reuse shapes and, and uh, I should reuse for, as you said before, for consistency and to get uh, the similar uh, shapes. Now I have a and question. Some of them really need to be the same. I have Go a question. Ahead. Once once you got closer to exactly what you wanted, 
if you mm -hmm. changed if you decided you wanted to change the n would you then have to change the h and how would you do that in a way that yeah. isn't so meticulous uh, yeah of course you do you have, yeah yeah you have to change what you can do is that you can create components for example i can create a component i can call oh. it uh, the the shoulder or i can call it h for example so i create a component and then this begins to be a component and then i if i change here oh it would so be cool. cool yeah so if i if i put the component here as well let's add component for my shoulder i'm so glad i asked that question that was awesome <laughs> yeah so i have it on the end as well so if i change it now I, it changes on both at the same time so cool. so yeah glyphs has many ways of automating things and making them easier to test you might want to decompose at a certain point but for to do this at the beginning it's really helpful also for serifs and when we do serifs we create corner components which is a bit similar it's similar to this that also creates, and you can adjust the serifs, uh, you know, make them thicker, making them uh, less thick, uh, with just changing one serif changes on all the font, like, you know, all the letters. So it makes it much faster, uh, the process. So I think the drawing, ty drawing type and creating your own font, it's much less harder than it was many years ago, like mm. 10 years ago, <laughs> was much harder um, in this case because of, the the software evolving and and being uh, available to make make it easier make it faster for people to use and yeah it, i mean it's not an adobe app it's a very good app as well uh, i think the integration is very important as well that we do use uh, a lot of this movement that i'm doing to see the process so i can type and i write here i can do documents immediately i can see the letters mm. so this really important for us when creating the fonts yeah Super cool. um we have so many questions everyone's very <laughs> interested in yeah. this um oh, where do i start annika you have a lot of questions you acknowledge that that's good <laughs> um she's asking where do you look for inspiration and how often do you make new fonts that's one hmm. of the questions. I mean, for inspiration, you can look everywhere, especially on your surroundings, I would say, and, and you're depending on where you are, but your cultural uh, images like signs on the street and, and shops and, and, uh, and also, of course, other books and other fonts that you can see. But it's usually nice to go to the more uh, vernacular ideas and then kind of bring it to a more modern uh, place. Mm. Uh, but it just starts out with, you know, being aware of your visual uh, languages around you and then bringing that to your own sketches and then later for digital. And I do sketch mostly digitally. So I do some hand sketches, but very, very little. And then I just start immediately sketching on, on the computer because as you can see, you can edit, you can uh, change very quickly and you can get an idea of what you want. This D is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on the other thing about how many fonts I do, I use I used to do more to produce a bit more of my own fonts. Uh, right now it's going a bit slower because I'm doing too much stuff at the same time. Um, but usually like at least two a year, um, I hope to do more uh, next year. But I'm studying at the same time. I work in the, another foundry doing project management so i help other people you have a lot going on yes yeah so this is like tw yeah i took 20 when it was the pandemic to do some studies because i was on at home so i thought why not so it's all online and now i'm finishing off that this year so maybe next year more fonts will come um yeah. I'll every time but it's I do help a lot of people create their own fonts and finishing them off. So I'm always around, uh, yeah, around fonts. Uh, but my own fonts, as I will show you next, I'll show you a new one. But uh, yeah, I, I try to get get on them and sketch all the time so I can keep ideas for the next font. Yeah. Now, when you're generating a lot of ideas, maybe through sketches, do you have a way of like, do you, or do you have a process of revisiting them and then kind of editing what what still seems exciting to you, you know, 
a few weeks later or a month later? Do you have anything like that? Or, or, or do you just look through the ideas and just pick whatever looks good? And, and yeah. I mean, I, if I have a sketch that I've done some time ago, I keep it in my desk and I look at it sometimes and then I start, okay, let me put this in the computer. And then I keep some files like uh, for as they would be inspirations and tries and like sketches, digital sketches. So then I go back to it. Sometimes I think, okay, this font has potential. This one doesn't. And sometimes you don't know. So it takes a while to get it uh, out. Um, so to start the ideas, but I try to have as many uh, as I can, like mm. just basic design ideas, and then I can follow up on some of them. So I, I have always plenty of bad ideas, so I can have a good one. <laughs> yeah, I try to do the same, like I have a folder of musical ideas, and then I revisit it and I listen and I go, Oh, that's terrible. Or Oh, this, this has potential, I'm going to do this, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, there, for every idea that I actually want to pursue, there's probably 10 or 20 that I, <laughs> that I just abandon. And that's fine. That's part of the process. Exactly. That's part of the process. That's why it's important to have many. So then you can choose and you can test them. So you might fall in love with a letter that you like and some shape that you like, and you can develop a whole alphabet from there. So it really depends. Um, but definitely keep around your sketchbook or digital like mood boards. So then you have plenty of ideas mm. to follow. Yeah. Norsh is saying, I think I might be creating fonts specific to brands. So they're proprietary fonts, but can we use existing fonts to get inspiration from without any copyright issues? Well, it always, you can never copy like a, totally a font. You can get inspiration. I remember um, someone saying, if you look at uh, Helvetica, for example, and you look at it for a, a whole week and then you close off your eyes and you don't look at it anymore. And then you try to sketch it by hand, then you get something new, something different. So of course, fonts are very similar, all that they have many similarities, but you need to be careful not to take um, like really details that are very personal to that specific font. But it's always helpful to think about what the font will be doing and what is serving. And you can set the parameters, like if it needs contrast or not, if it's small size, big size, kind of define the needs and then go from there. Like you set a brief for your design and that helps to stay away from uh, copying or or doing something too similar to other fonts but it's not easy with the geometric sense that are around you might yeah. be doing one more um but always try to be distinctive in some way yeah yeah it's important so yeah i feel the same in music right you can take inspiration but if you sing the same lyrics you're gonna get caught let's be honest yes. <laughs> um yeah. what one thing i do is um I'll play a song really quietly that I like, but I'll only hear little bits of it. And then I'll, I'll find, I'll hear a melody that's not the actual song because I can only hear a little bit and then I'll try from there. So that's one, one yes. idea. <laughs> um, yeah, for, for fonts is a bit similar, but, and the whole industry knows each other very well. So everybody will see if you, if you do some copycat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, I'm sure it happens all the time. Like, People see other people's fonts and they think that something was copied. It's just natural that a lot of things look similar. Mm. But as you said, if you have a brief for yourself, it always helps to start with some kind of use case. Like, mm. I want this to be used for restaurant menus and packaging or this. I want this to be geometric sands and I want it to be very mm. like utilitarian um just having some ideas of what you want your font to be used for will help to create a distinctive look and even if it looks similar to something else it's like it works for your use case and you designed it and it's not exactly the outlines of something else so it's yeah it's unique i'm exactly. like i'm liking this e very much um it's the smiling he yeah you know, i'm liking it. <laughs> it's warm I'm feeling with an about open it. mouth yeah it's it has a very round eye yeah i mean i like to draw more kind of fun shapes mm -hmm. and 
around. <laughs> also, like, <laughs> you know, the, the belly that it's like friendly enough, um, not to die. Maybe this top is not so nice. But yeah, it's the E is always a fun letter to design. Yeah, it's looking yeah. good. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm, I want to see a whole font around that one now. <laughs> yeah, let's see what's going on here. Okay. Oh, we can see it change immediately. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, that's how letters start. I remember, you know, sketching. I think it was one of my previous fonts, Alga. I had a very simple sketch by hand. And I just the A and the N. And slowly it just developed for a whole font. So it, it's, it just takes time, but um, it's pretty cool. That is cool. So sp speaking of whole fonts, should we uh, talk a little bit about your newest font in uh, the Adobe sure, Fonts let's, Library? Let's dive in. Uh, so let me open here. Yeah, so I'm going to show you the new uh, addition to the Adobe Fonts Library uh, on Novatype Foundry, which is Loretta. It was designed by me and by Abel Martins, which is a, gra is, is a graphic designer here in Porto and the aspiring type designer. Well, he's very good, actually, in having great ideas. So we developed uh, Loretta together. He had some in like ideas and he did some sketches. So this is actually his sketches uh, of like a pointy serif uh, font book uh, kind of bookish font mm. uh, so we wanted to have kind of this style uh, a bit of contrast and some crazy serifs uh pointy serif Ooh, like, that s is dangerous yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so this is how it starts and usually it's very clumsy sketches in a way but what matters it's the idea not really the sketch itself uh but this kind of edgy serifs are the like the starting point for Loretta. And then these were the first digital uh, sketches uh, that uh, Abel designed first. And we had like the round yeah. drop here, but it was kind of like too sweet and too nice uh, <laughs> with, the, with the sharp serif. So then we started to, to do a bit more. Um, here you can already see like the ending of the D and the A, it's already sh kind of more sharp. Uh, but we went further on uh, with the sharpness and then it became quite sharp, the A, and sharp ending. You can see the serifs, of course, lowercase is always a bit more nice, but we have the serifs, uh, the very long serifs there. And this was the, um, the final result already in use uh, showing off the, the letter. So they have this very... The very deep uh, cuts and very straight, but at the same time, the nice curve and some contrast. We, we kind of left the idea of doing the high contrast at the beginning because we wanted to have a working font for text. So it works really nice in small size. It can work for display if you like the, the style of the font of the letters. So yeah, the there's small details here, like the the small ink, not ink trap, but kind of cuts here. So that's what makes it unique and different that it has this kind of serif triangle. Or, and here yeah. you can see the whole alphabet. Go ahead, Ari. If you go back to the A showing that ink trap, if you zoom in, I think when we're using fonts, we don't usually zoom in this much mm -hmm. and we if, if you try designing a font you probably wouldn't know to do this but if you look at that distance between the two points it's pretty big when you zoom in and I don't think people notice like when you're making those distinctive you're shapes here. you have to really put big white space between them so that they show up when you're in text so i think that's a really cool detail i guess it's also in the n and d yeah p lots yeah. of the letters mm -hmm. yeah it's here on the q it's here on the top on the r yeah we we did that to again to make it more legible small size and also keep it sharp and nice when you blow it up and you have the details so yeah, this is mostly the full alphabet, lowercase, 
really quick uh, i think i think you touched on this earlier but danelle asked what characters do you design do you design first when you're first starting and i think you mentioned this a little bit at the beginning but maybe you could tell us again yeah usually it's the a and the n okay because they're going to be the most important ones and then the round ball so the d that will serve for the b and for the p and the q because when you have the rounds then you already have quite a lot of things and you have the n you have the m and you have the h and the i so once you define serifs you can define many things and if you have the round ones you have most of the alphabet then you have the fun ones like g <laughs> which is the fun one and you can have some uh you know the curves are really uh more intricate and hard to do this one has the sharp ear there to show off and the a of course it, it take it took us a while to get to this a it's never the first one that gets to the end mm. <laughs> it takes a while um yeah and the sharp serves they still go on on the on the uppercase but of course here not so thin but it's it's gonna be soon um this is the regular and then we have the italic and this is yeah this is uh, was also kind of interesting because we wanted to keep the sharpness with a round so it's kind of smooth but at the same time we keep the cuts and we keep kind of the, the like sharp set. yeah like so it's lot. not super sweet but it's really really nice um to use uh with the text so we made we made some fun decisions here i like the the w on the this one yeah at the bottoms and the the middle and the bottoms where it's a little bit curved um here the yeah uppercase yeah that looks really really nice yeah it makes it a bit softer and not so sharp <laughs> yeah also everyone this is available on adobe fonts right now so if you want to check it out go check it out right now you can start using it today <laughs> yeah yes. and have both <clears throat> the regular and italic and hopefully soon we'll have can I show now? <laughs> yes, I think yes. let's show a little bit of something new. I, this is a can... sneak preview, everyone. You you heard it here first on the Adobe Fonts show. So let's get it <laughs> here. And Cody, if you could put the link to Loretta. So it's fonts.adobe.com slash fonts slash Loretta. And then people can click on that. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully this year we'll have the display version, which will have the sharp, sharp serifs, Ooh. and we'll have the, the the high contrast that we want. It does have some different features also in the shapes, like in these parts here. It's a bit different from the Roman, from the the other weights. Um, so I think it will kind of shine those initial ideas of having the very sharp serifs and, and contrast, but still quite smooth uh, curves. So I think it's going to be nice. Uh, it was really cool to, to do this. I'm doing it uh, with a bell as well, and we're still ongoing developing it. But yeah, you can test it now already on uh, Adobe fonts. Uh, I think and it's- And bell is in the chat, so. Good yeah, yeah, you're watching. watching. Good to see you, you there. Can say hello to Bell. He's uh, always uh, uh, he did all the images as well, so he's also the graphic designer of these images that make Fantastic. it shine. Yeah. So you, can, yeah, you can find it uh, and and just try it out and see how it works for you. Especially for a book would be great. I mean, seeing it in magazines would be great. Uh, but everything, I mean, you can even use it on your own text editor. Yeah. And can you explain why there's a display font and the text font? I guess this isn't called Loretta text. It's just called Loretta. Yes. And then there's going to be Loretta display. So yeah. you mentioned books. And then what would you use the display version for? Yeah, I don't. Well, the, because we have such a high contrast on this one, we would use it in big size. So for headlines, for even um, uh even online on, on some blogs and, and news sites, it can be used in big size. So it's it's a different kind of use for this one, even though I think that Loretta as it is now, it's already good to use as headlines, but this one will have a bit more character once you're using it for big sizes. Uh, the other one is more a text font because of that, because it has the le less contrast. 
and it it survives very well. As we can see, like for example, here in this image, we can see it in the bottom. It's very, very readable. readable. Yeah. Yeah, it's super readable, it's sharp, uh, it's clean. So it has this contemporary feeling to it, but it still breeds of the traditional serif, you know, but it's kind of rounder and it has a more, uh, again, a bit warm feeling, as I like to to say, because it, it has the distinctive uh, shapes for the A and for the serifs. So it makes it very, very nice to use in small size. And if you had the display version in that last image you were just showing, you you might do the headline here in the display, and then the if if we yeah, had it right exactly. now, yeah, exactly. exactly, yeah, yeah, you could have a headline, yeah, in this big size. Do you have the S in the display? I do. What can we write? <laughs> huh. There we go. Uh -huh. Ooh, write Sagittarius, my zodiac sign. <laughs> I'm also Sagittarius. <laughs> it looks nice, I hope. I'm a Scorpio, I mean, so I... we can use an S in that as well. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I can write Scorpio. Yours. Oh, that looks yeah. cool. Yeah, it's still yeah you can see there's a lot more like um, sharp endings, like the R has and the A mm -hmm. is a lot sharper at the end. Exactly. So, yeah, we hope to finish this one this year and we can add it to the to the adult fonts uh, to the Loretta family because it's going to be tied perfectly to do the headlines and then the text yeah it will be great that will be a good pairing awesome. between the two of course yeah um, still need some refinements and as you can see you can see the uh, i want to i want to ask how do you know so i think this is with everyone who's a creator it's how do you know when you're done how do you know when you're finished right and, uh, and I know for songs, it's like when you put it out, that's when you're done because, you know, there's always stuff you can refine. So how do you how do you judge when it's time to put something out and you're pretty happy with it? Yeah, you have to feel like the curves are balanced, the weights are balanced. You have to look at it and nothing stands out. Okay. Like everything stands out in a good way, but you cannot have like a bump or... You know, serif, maybe the R here is too thin, so we might want to make it thicker here. For example, I can already see things to improve. So that's how it works. But when you don't see like anything standing out, I think that's when you should let go and just oh, it's time. space it, kerning, and finish it's it. Time off, to yeah. send it out into the world. <laughs> yeah, if there's like no strange curve and nothing wrong with it, then yeah, just just give it give it out. Awesome. Cool. Do you mind zooming into the A and just showing the outlines? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I think I have what I have in the background. It's the old, it's the the text version. Oh it's, yeah, to compare. It's, yeah, to compare. And that. for anyone that um, joined a little bit later after we left Glyphs, we're back in the Glyphs app, and Joanna is showing us the behind the scenes of a font that's in progress. So Glyphs is not an Adobe app, but it's a very common app that type designers use. So we're getting a little appreciation for all the work that goes into fonts. So welcome if you weren't here at the beginning, you can always watch the replay. Yes, and um, we're, we're gonna wrap up in about five or six minutes. So if you have questions uh, yes. for Joanna before we end, definitely let us know in the chat. Yes. Yeah. And we have, is it Nuno or Nuno from Portugal? Nuno. Nuno. Nuno, Nuno is here. Awesome. Welcome. Oh, yeah. So show us that A again. That was cool. Um, yeah, I have something to say about it that I would just want people to notice because we were talking about all the really sharp endings. And yeah. when you zoom out, the A does look sharp. But when you zoom in, you see it's not a it's sharp. sharp ending. It has a square edge. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I learned when I was learning about type design is mm -hmm. there's never going to be a point, a pointy edge because that will never look good. It always has to be a square. Even if it looks like it's a point, there's always going to be a square ending. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think that's interesting and worth pointing out. I, I cannot see how many points are there, but it's like 10 points, maybe to 15. Maybe I can see here. 
And I think we, we, had, we had a question like here. We had a question wow. about, wow. it is a lot. Um, we had a question about language support. And I wonder if, if, if there's any way to just show or how long does it take to to add language support to an existing font maybe um you know well um i mean i don't know if this shows very well here but loretta for example it has uh well it has all the uh, western european um languages so you have all the accents doesn't really show here but it does you can test it out in the in the app uh, usually once you have the basic character set done then it might take you uh, some time to do the accents and create uh, you know just make them happening I mean I can even show well this one is gonna be like who but you know you will have like this accents for the letter mm. and this one of course still from the old so I will have to refine it so then it goes for the display you know and you have to go through them to create them. Uh, so it takes a bit. It takes a bit to have all the, the Western European languages. And then you can have Vietnamese, which is pretty simple, just some stacking of accents if you want to support it. Then there's other languages, other scripts like uh, Cyrillic or um, Greek, uh, um, the index scripts. There's many other languages, but for Latin base, it would be the accents. And that Ooh. takes a while. And you can see it's a bit, bit messy here because this is a getting still done. But also but modular, you, right? Like once you create one of the accents, you can use it yeah, in multiple places. Of if course, needed. if you have the graph, the graph, you can use it in many different letters. You can even do this and then we can ask, like show all the glyphs that have this component. Oh, cool. so it becomes a component. So uh, again, it's going to be repeated on all the letters mm. that have it. So it's not that hard. Uh, Glyphs makes it easy for anchors because it has like this little anchor that kind of adds the accents to the letter and it makes it kind of okay as a process. You know? But it's important to support language support. It's really nice to have for, um, uh, you know, all the languages in Western Europe, it's nice to have. Uh, French, for Portuguese, um, I don't know, for many. You can find them here. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's important that the accents really all... harmonize with the design. Yep. And we also had an, an oh, yeah. episode with Radek Sedun where he talked yes. about his book, The Manual of Diacritics. So you can check out that episode too. It was really and interesting. And learn about, yeah, the accents and, and yeah, yeah. And how, important, how important they are to communication and, and to the design. Now we have about that's, three that's minutes really left. Good. So um, I think I want to share some links with everyone and maybe one final question. Someone asked Joanna how, how you name a font and maybe you could talk a little bit how you named <laughs> Loretta and then and then we can... Uh, well, you know, it's, it's hard to find names that are not taken <laughs> and the best names are usually taken already. <laughs> so pretty tough to find ones that you like and in this case i have no idea where i came up with loretta i don't remember exactly where i heard it where i saw it that i just thought it could be a good name um so i can't remember it just popped into um, your head <laughs> yeah and also the, the letters are important in mm. the name so if it has in this case it has the l it has the r that has quite a lot of personality. So I wanted to have the A as well. Uh, and I have many fonts called, so I have Laka, Lemongrass, they are with, with an L. So I thought <laughs> another one with an L. Yeah, it matches. <laughs> it awesome. matches. So that was, it's kind of the process for me, but, and Laka is a more Portuguese word. Some of my fonts have Portuguese names like Artigo, it's a Portuguese word, but I didn't, and Alga, um, but I didn't, um, I don't know, they just pop in my mind, usually because of the letters that I'm going to use that I want to show. Great. Like on Alga, I wanted to show the G, so I chose Alga. So, yeah, it really depends. Fantastic. Well, we have about... Not an easy task, not an easy task. We have about one minute left, so I just want to say check yeah. out Novatype on Instagram and on Twitter, and check out novatypefoundry.com to find out about all the fonts that Joanna has put out. And then also check out 
her Foundry page on Adobe Fonts. It was in the chat, but check out Loretta. Her other fonts are fantastic. Check those out as well. And if you liked this episode, please check out Adobe Fonts on Behance. That's where we announce all of our episodes and all of that good stuff. So come back again and see us soon. Joanna, this was so fantastic. Thank you for putting this all together yes, and for thank joining you us so much. for your second episode you. on Adobe Live on Adobe Live thank and Adobe Font Show. Thank you, Ari. It was great to be here. Awesome. We'll have you back yes. again soon, maybe with the next font, <laughs> whatever that is. Maybe for Loretta <laughs> Display. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. Fantastic. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining coming. us. Yeah.